Hello, welcome again. Uh, this is AP session re uh, review two, dynamics. So in this video, we want to talk about a couple of different things dealing with forces, force interactions, and how forces overall act in a system. So before we do any of this stuff, we want to just talk about dynamics. Dynamics, again, are dealing with forces, interactions, uh, and how they affect different things in a system. Big thing with this is, the, under, the overlying theme is, unbalanced forces cause things to accelerate. Yes, you can have forces acting on things, but if you have an unbalanced force, it accelerates. Accelerations we talked about in our previous unit, but in this topic, which is big for us, we can use forces to find accelerations. That's a big conceptual idea. Force, unbalanced forces cause things to accelerate. So we can talk about old school stuff, state Newton's three laws and all those things, but that's not what we're trying to do here. We want to try to focus a bit on second law, deal with third law force interactions, and deal with different types of forces as they interact in a system. Big thing that we can go ahead and say is, second law states, the total net force in a system is equal to mass times acceleration. On the AP equation sheet, it's shown a little bit weird. It's shown like this. You say, oh man, what does that mean? It's the same thing as this, just we went ahead and divided it by stuff. You can reference this, for, uh, this formula like this in this format to go ahead and use it in terms of a, a short answer question to whatever you need to do. Remember, as we said before, you can't say anything about forces unless you have a conditional statement like we see here. You can't start labeling stuff until we, until we start going ahead and looking at that. Now, the parts we want to deal with this are types of forces. We said we can have a weight force, the weight of an object on Earth, or if we're dealing with anything that we're exhibiting, is mass times g. We're going to talk about in our next unit how we find g and the different ideas that go along with that. But that is ultimately the mass. That's, that's the gravitational acceleration. That is what we call Fg when we have exhibiting our object. Okay, if we have something on a flat surface, there's a couple different ways that we can look at this. If it's just hanging out like this, yes, we have force gravity going downward, but there's also a reactionary force. If it's pushing on that surface, if I just have it like this, that means that there is some net force, that means it would have to accelerate. It is not accelerating, so we have to have some other force. The other force acting on it is normal. So normal is indeed acting this way. Now, you can say to yourself, if I have something like this, could I have a situation where force normal is not equal to force gravity? Yeah, I could actually have something like this. Now, if you look at that real quick, we no longer have balanced forces. What do we have? We've got unbalanced. So we would actually have an acceleration this way. How can I have something like that happen? Where does that happen? Elevator. We did a lab like that, doing vertical accelerations. That could also be decreased, but notice in both these cases, that force of gravity does remain constant. Now, the other part of this is force normally does not always need to be directed upward. Okay? And that comes from inclines. In inclines, if I have something like this and set up like that, that means that, okay, I now have force normal directed that way. Now, the problem with this is if we draw out force stuff, force gravity is directed this way. So, because of the weirdnesses of these two things being on two different planes, instead of defining up and over as our positive directions, we're going to go ahead and do that as positive, down plane as positive. Those two directions. So, what does that mean? If you remember back from earlier, that means that this is theta relative to the ground. That means I can break this part up. If this is force gravity, this is FGY and FGX. Notice it's hanging out down there. That is theta. That is talking about the force down the plane. So in this case, in that case that we see there, it would indeed be accelerating. It would be accelerating down the ramp. If you think about what's going on in terms of this, if I have in terms of the X component, some of the forces in the X, mass times acceleration in the X, what I have down the ramp in this case is just FGX is equal to MAX. So here, how would I find FGX? I have theta. It's a component of force gravity. So in this case, FGX will be FG times sine theta. So FGX will be FG sine theta is equal to MAX. So that looks a little bit weird. We realize, though, FG is MG. So mg sine theta 
is equal to mAx. That means m falls out. That means my acceleration down this plane is due to g sine theta. You should realize as the angle increases, sine of theta, as it approaches 90, sine of theta will ultimately increase, get larger and larger and larger. And as it does, that means, hey, that means we have a larger acceleration down the plane. Duh. That means it's going to be going this way, this way, this way, this way, and accelerating faster. It's going to have a greater acceleration down the plane. Now, this is saying if we don't have another thing introduced. This is saying that we don't have friction. The other part that we can look at is if we have a, uh, a, a force that's going against this thing, that is the force of friction. Now, we could actually have it that force of friction could be down the plane if I push this and it's moving up the plane, or if I look at it in this case, that it's accelerating in the plane, I'd have acceleration, or I'd have a force friction that way. So we want to talk about the ideas of friction. Friction is simply based upon two things, the relative smoothness between those two materials, which we reference as the coefficient of friction, and the force normal, the force provided by the surface. Now, we reference it as mu times force normal. We realize in the AP equation sheet, it's also shown like that. So this was equal, and that's just less than or equal to. But this is why. If I have something on a flat surface like this, and I'm pushing in that direction, okay, and I have force friction this way. If you think about it, I'm going to be pushing on it a little bit, and there's going to be force friction going against it. If I'm only pushing on it a little bit, force friction is only going to be a little bit. As I push harder and harder and harder, this is going to be increasing. If it did not increase like that, that means it'll be accelerating at that point. Only when it overcomes that static well, when we talk about the ideas of static friction, when it overcomes static friction, it then starts accelerating. Now, again, force friction is mu times force normal. We talk about two types of friction. The static, where things stationary, surfaces not sliding past each other, and kinetic, when they slide past each other. You could also see this as mu sub s for static and mu for k, uh, mu sub k. Okay. Old school ideas, we should remember that mu is between 0 and 1. Say, well, less than or equal to, really, it should be greater than that due to rounding and, and experimental values. If it's a frictionless surface, mu would be 0. The other part we want to deal with this is, again, between 0 and 1. The other part we want to deal with this is it's also dependent on force normal. So the harder those two surfaces push against each other, the more difficult it is for those two things to slide past each other. So how does that come and play? Well, if we stack more things on top of something, there's going to be more force normal, more force friction. The other thing to think about is force normal can change. How can it change? That's how force normal can change. Force of friction on an incline decreases. Again, force of friction on an incline decreases. What do we mean by that? Why is that happening? Because as I increase this angle, the surface has less resistance to this. Right? It can be pushing up less. So that means force normal is decreasing. That means that force friction will also be decreasing. Now, if we had a situation where it was on inclines and hanging out there, how can we go ahead and look at this thing? Well, if we look at this, combining the ideas of frictions and inclines, and say, okay, if it's hanging out there and not, so we can say this thing has an acceleration equal to zero. How can we exhibit that? Not only would it have FGX, we would have to have force friction that way. That's how we can see it in terms of not acceleration. So that means that this would actually be zero. And how does this rest of the stuff change? So there'll be FGX okay. So that means that FGX, if I pick down the right as positive, it means minus force friction is equal to zero. Say, so, oh man, that looks all kinds of weird. It looks a little bit ugly. How can we see what's going on? Again, that's FG sine theta minus mu force normal. Remember that we can use the force friction equation, right? Now, I've got force normal, I've got Fg. Seems like I don't have them enough. I need to analyze force normal. 
on this particular case, it's not accelerating on that frame. So that means that that acceleration is zero. It means the force normal minus FGY because that's the force gravity in that plane. So that means that force normal is equal to FGY, force normal is equal to MG, or is equal to FG cosine theta. Now, in just looking at it as I have it here, force normal is FG cosine theta, so force normal is equal to MG cosine theta. Hey, and if I look at this, what I have written here, that's MG sine theta minus mu, I can throw that in, MG cosine theta is equal to zero. Notice, M, I can divide by M, that falls out. I can divide by G, that falls out. But that's all I get. Hey, that looks a little bit weird. That looks a lot more elegant. And if I solve for mu in this particular case, I get tangent theta. What we just did here is a little bit of a sample problem to see what's going on in terms of relative forces. Notice I have not used numerical values to work towards a solution. I've only left things in terms of quantities. That's a big thing for AP multiple choice questions, and even for free response questions. Now, the other part we want to deal with in terms of these relative forces is dealing with an ugly term that seems not that bad, but sometimes it can make problems a little bit more difficult, is the idea of tension. The big thing with tension is it's just a force. It's just a force. So if we deal with tension problems, So tension is a force exerted by a rope or cable. What do I mean by that? What does that? How does that come into play? Well, if I have something hanging vertically like this, and I have a rope attached at the top, and this is, has some m, and if we say it's not accelerating. That means that in this case, Fg would be equal to the tension that I have there, right? Yeah. How do I show that? Some of the force in the y, May, no acceleration. Tension minus Fg is equal to zero. So in this case, tension is equal to Fg. Tension is equal to Mg. That's not that bad. But when we have things at angles, that's where things get a little bit more complicated. What do I mean by that? Well, if I have something hanging out like this, Okay. And it's not just a rope hanging down. If I have a rope where I've got two things like that. So if this is mass M and it's hanging at some angle, let's say from the vertical, that's theta. But it's the same angle on either side. If we were asked to deal with how what the tension is in this problem, that's where we have to think about what's going on. So let me go ahead and rearrange some things. And we have to think about the overall forces. So I, if I was trying to do this problem and try to find the tension in either one of these cables, how would I go about doing it? Well, I have mu, I, I, excuse me, I have the angle, I have this. So if it was to deal with the relative forces on this system, I have to think about those individual parts. And you should start to think about components. So I have a whole bunch of force gravity this way, okay? And I have a tension here. And I have a tension here. Now, you should realize that the tension itself in each one of those sides is not going to be the same as this. The vertical components of those two parts won't be equal to this. The, vert the vertical components of both those two parts added up will be equal to Fg, though. Okay. So how do we find this? So some of the forces in the x, mass time acceleration in the x. Now, if I do that, if I make right and, uh, up and right positive, looking at that, if I try to look at what I have here, that means that's tension y, that's tension x, and that's tension y, and that's tension x. You should realize here that tension x, dealing with this stuff in just only the x direction, doesn't help me all that much. Because I'm going to make this t1, and I make this t2. So that means that t1x, minus, because that's positive, minus t2x is equal to zero. 
Now, at that point, I don't really know anything about that. I don't have anything really going on in the x direction. So I actually have to pause on that. Let's try it in the y. Well, some of the forces in the y mass time acceleration in the y. There is no vertical acceleration. So that means that t1y plus t2y, well, that's not just equal to zero. I have minus fg. I have force gravity also acting downward. So if I deal with this now, okay, if theta, if those two angles are the same, you should realize that the upward components, if the angle on both sides is the same, the upward components would be equal in this case. So that means I can actually rewrite this as 2ty minus fg is equal to zero. Now, hey, I'm working towards a little bit more of a goal to go and rewrite this. So 2ty, and I'll deal with that in a little bit, minus mg is equal to zero. Now, hey, I'm working towards this thing, but I want that. If you look at this, that's tension, right? That's theta, that's ty. So how can I describe what's going on? Well, ultimately, if that's tension, right? So that means that cosine of theta would be equal to ty over t. So that means my tension is equal to so my tension times cosine of the angle is equal to ty. Hopefully what I just described there makes sense in terms of the relative angle. So that's my vertical, that's the component, that's the angle that I'm referencing. So my tension to y is t times cosine of the angle, so 2 times tension times cosine of the angle minus mg is equal to 0. So in this case, how can I find and go through this whole thing? So 2 t cosine theta is equal to mg, tension is equal to mg all over 2 cosine theta. There we go. Not that bad. The most difficult part of this deals with the component part portions. Be careful and force stuff in terms of components. Now, this video is mainly focused on the ideas of things being still, not accelerating. Can we solve for things in, in terms of accelerations? Yes, the forces are unbalanced. Again, this was simply designed to be a review to talk about the forces, force components, and big AP test ideas. Thanks. See you in the next video.